Okay, um, in this video, we're going to see how the Hepatose rule can be applied to solve limits that otherwise give us uh, meaningless answers. For example, suppose we were considering this problem where we had x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1, and we were dividing this by another function, say, x squared plus 2x minus 3, and we want to take the limit of this as x approaches 1. And if we plug 1 into the top, we get 0. If we plug 1 into the bottom, we get 0. So we get 0 over 0, which is meaningless for us. Now, if this was going to infinity instead of to 1, then we could try dividing the top and bottom expressions by the highest power of x. And then we'd have here terms that would have 1 over x, or they have x in the denominator. Then when x goes to infinity, those terms would drop out of 0. We're not taking this to infinity. This is going to 1. So that trick isn't going to work for us. And here's where the Hepatose rule comes in. It says that if we have two functions, say f of x and g of x, we're taking the ratio of them like we're doing up here, and we're taking the limit of this ratio as x approaches some value. Here we're doing it for 1. Here we'll just call it a. Well, that would also equal the limit as x approaches a when you take the derivative of f of x and the derivative of g of x. And the reason this is so helpful is that when you take the derivatives here, and sometimes when you put in x equal a, it gives you a meaningful answer. It doesn't come out as being 0 over 0. So let's go back to our original problem here. We started off with the limit as x approaches 1 of x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 1 divided by x squared plus 2x minus 3. We put x equal 1, that comes out 0 over 0, so that doesn't do us much good. But that will also equal the limit as x approaches 1. Like this. 3x squared, now we're taking the limit, plus 2x minus 1. And the bottom part, that's going to be 2x plus 2. Okay, now what happens when we plug in x equals 1? So we'll have 3 plus 2 is 5, minus 1, that's 4. And down here we have 2 plus 2 is 4. So it comes out that the limit of this is 1. It is not 0 divided by 0. And again, this is just a real simple basic application of the Hepatol's rule. If you're putting in, in for x equals for a certain value, and you're getting out a meaningless answer, try doing the same thing again, only you take the derivative of your functions. Let's take another example. Suppose we have this, um, x cubed minus 2x squared plus 4x minus 3. And down here we have 4x squared minus 5x plus 1, and we're taking the limit again as x approaches 1. So if we plug that into here, we have 1 minus 2 is negative 1, plus 4 is 3, minus 3, you get 0, not a good start. 4 minus 5 is negative 1, plus 1, 
0 over 0 doesn't do us any good at all. That's meaningless. So we say this would also equal the limit as x approaches 1. of a new function, which we get by taking the derivatives. 3 times x squared minus 4x plus 4 and this would be 8x minus 5. And now we go ahead and we put x equals 1 and here we get 3 minus 4 is negative 1 plus 4 we get 3 on top and here we're going to have 8 minus 5 3 on bottom again the limit comes out to equal 1 let's try this with a trig function suppose we have you want to take the limit of x squared minus the sine of 3x divided by x squared plus 4x and we want to take the limit of this as x approaches 0 so if we go ahead and just put x in we're going to have 0 minus 0 up here the sine of 0 is 0 divided by 0 plus 0 so it doesn't get us very far, but this will equal the limit as x approaches 0 of 2x minus the cosine of 3x taking the derivative of this and taking the derivative of what's inside that will be 3 and then down here we will have 2x plus 4 now we have x equals 0 this goes away this goes away the cosine of 0 is 1 so this comes out to equal minus 3 fourths so here are just three very basic applications of uh, the Hefepel's rule. Now, you might be wondering, well, what happens if you take your derivative here, and you put your value in for x, and you still get 0 over 0? Are you stuck then? Or can you just keep reapplying the rule? That if this comes out to be 0, then take the derivative of this, take the derivative of this, and try it again. And yes, that's perfectly legitimate, and that gets into a little bit more of uh, complicated examples of the Hepatol's rule. And come back and join us for the next video, and we'll consider some of those more complicated examples.